when you're marking your lines on your roof and we measure down 40 inches or 3 feet 4 inches down and make that mark the reason we're doing that measurement down is because of what's called fire setbacks we're going to take a minute and talk about what are the fire setback requirements and why you'd measure down from the roof like this and probably in from the sides as well the rules for fire setback and access and stuff is built in now into the international residential code or IRC I'm going to go over this text, but don't worry, I'm going to move pretty quickly and show you a bunch of pictures that make this all really clear. For hip roofs, you need at least one access path going vertically up the hip roof where any solar modules might be. That path has to be three feet wide. For roofs that have a single ridge, like a gable type of design, that needs to have two three foot wide access paths going up, uh, one on either side of wherever you might put the solar. And if you have modules on both sides of like a hip or valley where they're next to each other you need to have 18 inches on each side of that hip or valley giving you again three feet uh, between them and the one that leads to us coming down from the top or the ridge of the roof is a requirement for smoke ventilation where the guys might cut a hole in the roof to let smoke out of a house and typically that always has to be at least three feet down from the ridge of the roof okay here's that first case for a hip type of roof and you can see that there's the access pathway on one side that's three feet wide and goes all the way from the bottom to the top. It also shows the uh, smoke ventilation setback down from the ridge of three feet. Here's that second case of a single ridge line type of roof, which is like a gable structure. And here you see that requirement for two vertical access pathways, each one three feet wide on either side of the solar that's on that surface. You can also see that, once again, there's the ventilation requirement of three feet down from the ridge. Notice how there's no space required at the bottom of the array, only at the top. That's where the firefighters might actually cut a hole to allow smoke ventilation out of the house. And realize that this is a minimum requirement. You need three feet or more. And like in our lesson, we actually say go the three feet and then add like four inches more just for safety, just to make sure that there's going to be no question when you get inspected that you're at least that three uh, feet or 36 inches down. But you can make it more depending on the size of the roof. And here's that third case where you might have solar on either side of a valley or either side of a hip ridge. There's your requirement for one of those two vertical axes on a roof that has a single ridge. Uh, three feet wide going all the way from the bottom to the top and there's your requirement for roof ventilation having three feet down from the top ridge of the roof and there's the unique requirement in this case uh, where we have a valley that you want three feet wide that's your other access up um, but you can have 18 inches on one side and 18 inches on the other okay so that's a quick overview of the fire setback rules what a lot of people end up now calling the three foot rule I just want to finish by adding in a couple more points about those roof access, those vertical pathways. Uh, there are some requirements, and they make a lot of sense. They can't be located over what would be windows or doors, because you don't want any flames or smoke coming out right where they want to put a ladder to get up to them. They have to be built on strong points of construction, so strong points of the roof, because they got to be able to support the firefighter who might weigh up to 250 pounds when fully equipped. And they can't be where they might conflict with overhead or ground obstructions like tree branches and things like that or with uh, plants or anything down on the ground and there can't be any trip hazards on those vertical access pathways like vents or skylights antennas satellite dishes things that would be in the way of somebody climbing up that access path and know that your local jurisdiction can change these they can make them more severe or they can make them less severe for example new york state has adopted some changes to the international residential code and they allow for different kinds of interpretations of how to allow for adequate roof access pathways in different situations. And in Boulder, Colorado, the solar community worked with the fire department and they came up with some different standards that in some cases allow for a 30 inch instead of 36 inch access walkway and only 12 inches down from the roof ridge. So know that there's an international residential code with a set of standards for these setbacks, but make sure that your designers and your installers know the local uh, variations, perhaps, to those international standards, because that may allow you more access 
to your roof when you're actually installing the job. Hey, thanks for watching the training video using Interplay's simulation based training program. You can keep watching our solar videos by clicking on the link to your left or stay up to date on our latest solar snacks by subscribing on your right. To learn more about how the STP provides critical team training and helps you build an onboarding program at your company, please go to interplaylearning.com.